Today is a special treat for me because we are going to interview Harry Gray, one of my favorite professors here at Caltech, and he is in charge of a very big uh, group effort from professors all over the place who are working together to try and build a better solar cell, which is just a, some size thing, right, that harnesses light from the sun and then changes and saves that energy from the sun in somewhere else. In this case, they're storing it as hydrogen gas, all right? And so they are trying to build a better solar cell, maybe a cheaper one and everything, so that we could then make lots of them and harness lots of, of energy. Okay, I'm Harry Gray, uh, professor at Caltech, and I work in solar energy research. It's one of my principal interests. Uh, um, I've been interested in solar energy research for some time. Uh, um, I started uh, over 30 years ago working on uh, inorganic photochemistry related to hydrogen production. Uh, did some experiments uh, that showed uh, you could make some complexes that under with solar radiation uh, generate hydrogen from water and uh, that got lots of interest and about five years ago I got back in really full, full time into working in the field of devising systems that would uh, do artificial photosynthesis that would split water into hydrogen fuel and oxygen so that's what I'm up to now I've uh, I've got several systems going. Uh, my interest is in developing a system that can be scaled up, and not in the, a system that has such expensive components that it wouldn't be possible to scale it up. So we're getting rid of things like platinum and arsenic and, and elements that uh, won't really fit in any kind of environmentally friendly scalable renewable energy system and we're trying to build uh, water splitters, uh, fuel producing systems from sunlight and water uh, out of earth abundant materials, out of non-toxic earth abundant materials, things like iron, rust, fool's gold, cobalt compounds, uh, zinc oxide, uh, things like that that are very abundant and and very cheap uh, and so if we if we're successful in our effort, uh, we'll not uh, hit some kind of brick wall, but in fact we'll be scalable and people can actually scale it up and use it. We have a, uh, an assembly. Um, our current version is we have things called nanorods, which are um, very small uh, scale uh, rod-like uh, molecular materials that absorb sunlight. Light comes in to the nanorods, excites the nanorod, and, and a positive charge comes over here, and an electron, negative charge comes over here. And so this assembly has two nanorods, one at the top for oxygen evolution from water, one at the bottom, if you like, for hydrogen evolution, and a membrane in between, a membrane so it separates the hydrogen from the oxygen. Because if you don't separate the hydrogen from the oxygen, they'll just recombine to make a, a big explosion as you probably witnessed. We want to prevent that. We want to save the hydrogen fuel and the oxygen so we have a membrane separator like in a green leaf in this device. So there's work on the rods in our group. There's work on these building these rods properly to absorb a lot of light and do this separation of positive and negative charges very efficiently. There's work on the photocathode. Right now the photocathode's made of silicon rods. The photoanodes made from either zinc oxide or tungsten oxide or some metal oxide. And the catalysts right now are, we have lots of cobalt catalysts that we're working with on both the photoanode and photocathode right now. So we've, we're doing, we're working on things that don't involve platinum. We, there's not enough platinum in the world to, to scale up to the point we want to, so we've got to replace the platinum with things like cobalt and iron rust and so on. Silica and toxin oxide, things like that. And that's what we're doing. That's what our research is all about right now. So that is the main goal. You're trying to take and make a better solar cell, a little piece of equipment that takes the sun's energy and stores it in some way, in this case in hydrogen. Right? And they're trying to do this um, by first of all making it really efficiently, but most importantly they're trying to build one that doesn't use rare expensive components. Okay, Something they can build cheap so they can make lots and lots of them and we can put them all over the place and help solve the energy problem.
I got into science just because I um, was interested in, in phenomena. I, I, everybody knows I was interested in colors of compounds and, and what made the colors. I was interested in all kinds of reactions. As a kid, I, I got chemicals and mixed together and made all sorts of things. Uh, a lot of people make explosions. I was more interested in colors of compounds and what caused them and how you could manipulate those colors. But I got into, I just sort of naturally got into this as a, as a kid at 11, 12 years old. I was fiddling around with chemicals and stuff and trying to figure out what was going on. And that one thing led to another. I just, I just sort of got into it. I, I didn't have, there weren't any teachers or anything that stimulated me, frankly. I, I got into it because I was just interested in, uh, in natural phenomena and curious, was very curious about colors and what, what colors were all about and what made colors and so forth. I also liked explosions and like other kids and so on, other things like that. But the thing that really drove it was, it's driven me all my life is, is why, are, why, are co why are compounds the colors they are? Why are gemstones the colors they are? Why is you know what's a, what's what's why are leaves green and stuff and why do they change colors and all that sort of stuff and that really got me going and I haven't uh, looked back. Oh well, working with young people, working with bright young people is the best part of my job. I love to work with young bright people who are discovering things, thinking about things new. I love to teach. Uh, I love to teach, uh, and what I found in my teaching is that I, all my good ideas come when I'm teaching because I'm thinking about how I'm going to present something, presenting it in new ways, thinking about it. When I'm thinking about it, I come up with new ideas for my research. So all, all through my career, my teaching has driven my research uh, because all of my great ideas come when I'm thinking about how am I going to present this, how am I going to think about this. And I say, and I say gee whiz, I've just thought of something new to do in the, in the lab and research. And so a tremendous amount of, of great research comes from great teaching, I think, and thinking about how you're going to present something. And so that's, that's the fun part of my job. The fun part of my job is combining teaching and research in this very synergistic way, in this interesting way. So, and working with young people. Working with young people it never gets old. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can go and go and go. When you're working with fresh minds and young people and people are inquisitive, I mean, what, there's nothing, what's not to like about that?